Like the Soviet Union, the CCP brainstormed wildly unrealistic five-year plans to rapidly industrialize the nation. The most infamous of these was the second five-year plan, christened by Mao as the Great Leap Forward. The first five-year plan had relied mainly on Soviet assistance to construct massive Soviet-style factories, foundries, and so on, all built with essentially slave labor. However, for the Great Leap Forward, Mao got it into his head that the Chinese should do all these things completely from scratch. This inconceivable moron actually ordered the peasants, most of whom were barely educated, to start smelting steel in their homes. Each family was tasked to produce a certain tonnage of steel without being provided any raw materials, any equipment, or even the most basic instruction in metallurgy. Whether out of a sense of duty or fear, the Chinese peasants complied and started building crude stone kilns in their backyards. Now it turns out that modern steel production is in fact a highly complex, laborious process. The peasants never got anywhere near meeting their absurd quotas, and the steel they did produce was of such poor quality as to be utterly useless. What are you fucking stupid? The big brain communists tampered around with agriculture too, where have I heard this one before, and came to the perfectly ignorant but quintessentially Marxist conclusion that household vermin are agents of capitalism. Yes, like capitalists, they exploit the labor of the proletariat and therefore must be totally eradicated. And by far, the worst of all these bourgeoisie oppressors was naturally that most vile and heinous creature, the Sparrow. Oh sure, the Sparrow looks harmless, some would say cute even, but beneath that clever facade of bourgeoisie innocence is a greedy manipulative capitalist just waiting to steal the production of the heroic worker. The bird? Yeah, the bird! Sparrows, you see, eat the seeds that fall from food crops. Yummy. And so they are no more than petty thieves of the people who must be killed to the last brood, which the Chinese attempted to do through something called the Smash Sparrow Campaign. As part of the Smash Sparrow campaign, children were enlisted to bang pots and pans around, chasing the sparrows out of their nests. Later, adults knocked the nests out of the trees, crushed their eggs underneath their sandals, until there were almost no sparrows left in all of China. It didn't seem to occur to anyone that massively interfering with the ecosystem just might yield unintended consequences. Besides fallen grain, sparrows also eat insects, specifically plant-eating insects like, oh, I don't know, locusts. Within a year of the Smash Sparrow campaign, itself part of the larger Four Pests campaign, the locust population exploded and they did what locusts do best. The communists had played God and literally created a biblical plague. You dumb mother... These are but two examples of the spiral of insanity caused by the Great Leap Forward. Unmentioned but present also were the rampant misuse of poisons and pesticides, widespread deforestation and wildly inaccurate record keeping. Why inaccurate record keeping? Well, anyone who could write was assumed to be a capitalist or capitalist adjacent and sent to a collective farm while well, anyone who was a vicious rural thug was assumed to have attained revolutionary consciousness and so put in charge of food distribution. The problem was exacerbated further by the Chinese predilection towards saving face. No one wanted to admit they were being anything other than a good productive communist, so they simply lied to their superiors, who lied to their superiors, and so on and so on all the way up the chain of command. This led the authorities to believe in the existence of a food surplus when in reality the country was teetering on the brink of disaster. The diversion of peasants from food to steel production further reduced the harvest yield and all it took was one bad drought in one province to trigger a chain reaction that brought China to her knees. From 1959, to 1962, the great
Great Chinese Famine took more lives than the Chinese Civil War and World War II combined. The true figure will never be known, but reliable estimates put the death toll between 20 to 50 million people. In some provinces, nearly 20% of the population perished in less than three years. Famines are remembered differently from wars or genocides. Wars, for whatever reason, enthrall the imagination. They stand out in history like the great peaks of a mountain range, salient events of which stories can be told, in which heroes or villains can be recognized, from which lessons are drawn and imparted to future generations. None of this is really true of famines, even those perpetrated by human folly. There seems a great eagerness to forget and not to remember them. Perhaps it is because there is no drama in famine as there is in war. There are no great armies or battles, no daring assaults or desperate last stands. There are simply millions of people hobbling to and fro, watching themselves and their loved ones gradually diminish until they finally lie down in exhaustion and mundanely expire. Yet every life taken is no less tragic or avoidable than those lost in the great wars of history, the suffering of the survivors no less traumatic or heartrending. For three years the people of China were reduced to eating worms and grasshoppers, boiling the bark of trees with strands of grass, and yes, even butchering their own dead for meat. <laughs>